My name is Prince and I'm an actor. I think I've been an actor for the longest time. I, I remember when I first went on stage, I was six and I never stopped. So mm. I transited from stage to film, then TV, then radio. So I've pretty much done every form of acting. Olinga is a very upbeat guy. He's a very arrogant, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, he also has his soft part. He's a very loving guy. You know that he's a very so his weakness is his ex girlfriend that he's met again. I'm attached to Jeffin films in a bigger depth than, you know, like than a contractual because uh, the the directors, both of them, of Jeffin films for me, they're family. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's. Uh, and, uh, Richard and Fiona Nondo, for me, they are family. And uh, we've been working together since 2016. Uh, we, we have a mutual understanding on how we work. And uh, basically, I'm, I've been, uh, I could say, I am attached in that way to Jeffin, Jeffin Films. And we've done a lot of films together. Well, clearly, <laughs> with what I've explained. No, I didn't audition for the role, actually, the truth is, I was hijacked for this role. <laughs> no, that's just the truth, you know. Okay. <laughs> I was just hijacked for this role because mm -hmm. uh, go to just season one and season two, I am actually the cinematographer, mm -hmm. you know. I am doing the camera and uh, because of the speed of the way things unfold, sometimes there's a, a role that comes up and you need somebody who is already, mm -hmm. who is not going to, you know, wait when just throw my script today and you run with it. For me, Good Witcher just came natural, you know, like uh, I saw the story grow, we developed it together and all that. And uh, when it was time to shoot, uh, it was an easy transition. It was easy because that's what I always do. You know, I like, I like doing camera yeah. and uh, it gives me opportunity to, to grow, to exercise my skills, to learn new things, you know. So for me, I think the inspiration was to do something new on TV, something local, which, which is, something I thought I should be part of because a lot of uh, a lot of the series that we get to do in English and all that and all our films that mm. we've done so I was like wow this one in Uganda awesome let's you know let's try something so that excitement got me onto it no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's interesting yeah. I think I would say there's this one day that uh, we had to shoot we had to shoot it was a feature film we had to shoot and then I got an eye infection Mm. I got an eye infection in the evening because we were shooting somewhere in Mukono. Drove back home. Uh, by that time, I was living on Entebbe Road. I drove back home. I woke up in the morning. I could not see because it was this eye. Mm. The eyelids were swollen like, like this far, like this far, like a huge swelling. I could not open the eye. So because this eye can't open, this eye gets confused. Sometimes I'm struggling even to use this one. But we had shot a hospital scene and left it halfway and we had to continue. Mm. So I had to drive with one eye all the way from Entebbe Road to, to Mukono, you know, and I uh, was shooting at a hospital. And uh, it was really painful. I was in pain, but I had to go to work. But we pulled off the day, it was a, by the grace of God. I just showed up and told the director, I'm here, we have to work, and I am here. I didn't want to give you an excuse on the phone. This is what I look like. <laughs> he took a minute, he looked around all the doctors, they tried everything, but they said, you know, it cannot go down today, but we can give you medicine, maybe in one or two days it will be okay. Mm -hmm. But we have to finish because we can't, you know, we can't leave hospital scene. So he told me, put on sheds and we shoot and we shot. Number one is, the grace of God, because truthfully, there's something that is deep inside mm. that no man could have put there except God, which is what makes me to do these things. And also, um, after that, there's a lot of effort, uh, because what I want usually is, like you put it, I want, when I see people do different roles, like, you know, when I watch screen and, uh, I see actors do different roles. I always want, you know, to make people feel something. Mm -hmm. Like the way they make me feel when I'm watching there, yeah. you know, like 
the best actors there is in the world. And I'm like, mm. so every day for me, acting has always been in my life. So every day when I sit there and I'm watching people, I'm always taking in. So I need to have, I need to have an emotional bank and I need to have an imagery bank in my brain and in my heart that I can use when the role comes up. Okay. You know, like when I sit somewhere and just, sometimes I go to a role park to have lunch, not because I want to have lunch, but just because I want to watch people. Sometimes I just go and sit at city square, it's true. I just sit and watch people. Because it's, it's what helps me that when I imagine somebody going through something that I've seen before, it's easier to play it. Mm. Because I cannot have gone through everything in life that when you give it to me, I'll play it. I have to have borrowed it from somewhere. So I do a lot of borrowing from people mm. in real life. Like every day I interact with a lot of people and I, I, I pay attention and watch people. And I think that's, that's, that's what helps me when it comes to creating the different characters. Also sometimes when I have an, enough time, I usually like dive into it and do a huge amount of background research. I write my own biography and mm -hmm. to make the character more believable. But I mean, for TV, it's different. Like mm -hmm. time, time is too short. Like, so you have to use the emotional, you know, bank that you've created for watching people. So yeah, I think those, those are this um, and also I pray hard and work hard, so when the two come together, nothing is impossible. I think I was 11 years. Oh. I was 11, and what I got was, uh, I think it was, uh, it was a blue, it was a blue basin, plastic. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and a green cup, plastic as well. Mm. You know, those are the things I got. Wow. Uh, that was when I acted on stage for my school. And uh, I happened to win the, the best performance of an actor. But our school didn't win. It was the, I think, the district tournament. Mm. The, because back in the day, we used to do uh, AIDS competitions, like all schools around the country. So district brings about three. Then you go to the nationals. Mm. And so our school didn't make it. But yeah, I happen to get that recognition and still in my heart, I know that, you know, that for me, that's a very precious award, although I didn't happen to keep the accolades, right? <laughs> so um, that was the very first recognition I got. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me going, that made me not look back. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, before that, I was just doing it because I felt I could do it. So when that happened, I was like, oh, you can get recognized Ooh, on the stage and everybody's clapping. And you know, in theater, all you hear is the sound because the lights are on you. Mm. You can't see. And I was a kid and you can't see anywhere. And then it felt good. So I was like, hmm, okay. Um, in film, in film, my first award, I think I do remember it. Yeah, my first award was, uh, was the film Battle of the Souls. Actually, I won it in absentia. Uh, it was in Italy. I'd, uh, it was at a festival mm. in Italy, but I'd left Italy. I was in uh, I was in Netherlands. Mm. So then they just called. They're like, you know what? The award night has happened, and you won the best actor. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, no, actually, best supporting actor. Mm. I was like, what? Really? Oh, I should have stayed for that one night, so I could have received my... But they sent it to me either way, so when I came back to Uganda, they mailed it to me, I got it, and it was a nice feeling. Mm. And, and I remember the first thing I did was I got credit, and I called my dad. Mm. I called my dad, and for one reason, because my dad was the person who didn't encourage me to practice my talent from when I was young, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like uh, agree with it because he said, you know what, that's going to distract you from your academics. You have to let that go. So when I got the international award, I had to make sure I tell him. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I am calling you just to let you know, <laughs> I am the best supporting actor right now, you know? He's like, why are you? I'm like, I'm like, oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. I left Italy. I'm in Netherlands right now. He's like, so when are you coming back? I was excited. I'm like, yes, you see, I, I saw, I knew this dream was happening. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was beautiful. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, 
I think the other moment I remember for the awards was when Forrest Whitaker shook my hand and handed me my accolade and said, I'm proud of you. Oh, that was special. So, I mean, there are moments I remember in, in, in those awards that, uh, you know, every day I just smile. I'm like, oh, that was a few moments, a few seconds, but it was special. I think I, um, I always try to push myself when I get a chance to push myself to, like, beyond the best. And uh, I think the opportunity came with the first film, Battle of the Souls, because there are so many things I had to prove. Mm. I just declined a job, a good job at the president's office. I declined it because I wanted to do film. So I had to prove myself. And then, you know, I, I, I was fresh out of campus. And then I had to prove myself to the director as well, because, you know, I needed to let him know that mm. he did make a mistake. You know, and then I also had a lot of time, enough time to prepare myself for that role. Eventually, it's the role that has won me the most awards in the world. Like it has won me more awards than any other role. Um, I think I did, I, I, I did my best for that role. It was a challenging role. I was, I was starting. I was an amateur. Right now, I'm glad to say there are two roles I'm preparing for. 2022 and 2023. Yeah. <laughs> they, they are going to take that one off the list. That I promise. That I promise. And then there's, I think, another role that I think I did extraordinarily stuff that I wouldn't do. Because many times um, the role made me shave my hair and my beard. Unfortunately, that film is not. I, I, it is a Korean director. I loved it so much that for the first time, I cut off my hair and my beard. Oh. So for that, that I think is something extraordinary <laughs> when you think about Prince. It's, oh no, it's, I love my hair, you know? I thought about it, you know, the director even told me, you know what, don't mind, if, if, if you can't, if you can't, it's okay, I understand, you know, I understand. I went home, I couldn't sleep. In the morning, I showed up. He didn't even recognize me. <laughs> yeah, I showed up. He didn't he recognize me. Mind. Yeah, he didn't recognize me because I look very different without hair and beard. Yeah, that's true. I shaved yeah. off like even the mustache gone. He didn't recognize me. I just came and sat. I had breakfast, and I was reading my script, and you know, and actually most people didn't recognize me. Then he started looking for me, and I'm like. Yeah. Like, oh my God, you cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, when a role is interesting, I would love to go extraordinarily beyond and above because it's the impact that you leave behind after that role that matters. Yes, when I came into the industry, I, was, I, I knew how to act on stage. I didn't know how to act for film. And I, I got the best training. I will say that forever. I'm eternally grateful. And um, actually, we were trained by... Um, a Hollywood director, he directed a film a long time ago called Congo. Mm. And he said, he said one very simple thing, which I think I took with me and helped me a lot. He said, talent does not take you anywhere. Discipline does. That's the most important thing. You can be very talented, but if you have no discipline, No one is going to take you on their job. No one's going to give you a job. And truthfully, I've seen people that I started with, people who joined when I was already in the industry, amazing talent. But because of discipline, they're nowhere. I think by the grace of God, I learned also being raised up in the military, I know what discipline means. So it has helped me to stay here. You know, so I think the advice I would give to young people is uh, decide, mm. mm -hmm. decide, commit, be humble, and be disciplined. No matter whether you're crew or cast, I think what applies is the same. Mind your business. When I'm hired as an actor, I'm an actor. So what does that mean? I do my research, I come on set early, I respect costume, I respect makeup, you know, I respect all departments and just be what I was hired to be. Everybody knows what they're doing and they'll do it right and trust them to do it. 
you know, and just, you know, go ahead. And those things will make you succeed. I'm telling you this because it's a fact. And I've lived it for 15 years. I have worked all over this world. I've worked with some of the most amazing directors. I've worked, I, I don't know what part of the world I haven't worked with. I've worked, I mean, where? Name it, the entire Africa I've worked. I've worked in French speaking Africa. I've been casted to go and act in a, in a country where they speak French. I don't even speak French. Mm. I've worked in Israel. I never dreamt of being in Israel one day. No, and trust me, I didn't even think I would ever step in Israel. I did because of acting. And how does that happen? Decide this is your life. Remember I told you a story I declined a state house job yeah. when I was starting? I decided and I committed. Mm. When I committed, I gave it all my all without reservation. That's true. Yeah, and I stayed humble. I learned a lot when I was humble. Oh, pride will make so you fall. Pride. It's very true though, it's very <laughs> true. Yeah, so I think that would be my advice. It's, it's an interesting question. Um, I would say by the grace of God, I'll be, I'll be probably somewhere doing an HBO, directing an HBO series or mm -hmm. Netflix. Yes. Uh, because now the world is unpredictable. You never know what is going to happen in five years and you never know how film is going to change in five years. But what I promise you is I'll still be on top of it. No matter how it changes, no matter where it takes me, no matter where to find me, I'll make sure I'll still be on top of it. So in five years, by the grace of God, I still want to be on top of the cinema and television industry. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Prince. Prince, it has been really an humbling <laughs> evening to have you on our show. Uh, and we're looking forward to watch you in Wutuja. Please. <laughs> There's Prince.com, P-R-Y-N-C-E.com. Um, and then my social media, all my social media, whether Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they have the same, the same, you know, address, which is one, one, the figure, like number one, then Prince. Prince is P-R-Y-N-C-E. Yeah. Thank you.